G'day, Dylan here from the Byron Bay Observatory. I've just finished a photo, uh, which is a miracle because we've got some clear weather. So check out this image of M58, the M58, M83, <laughs> the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy. This is a beautiful, classic looking barred spiral galaxy. One of the best in the Southern Hemisphere, I think, for these normal sort of looking galaxies because we've got plenty of kooky looking galaxies, but this one, is a classic. In this image, I did something differently in my processing than I've ever done before. Now, I've come at denoising images a number of ways over the years, but recently I've fallen into basically using a little, little, tiny, tiny, tiny little dab of Topaz AI denoising at the end of my workflow. It makes everything so buttery smooth. It looks amazing, but completely unnatural. So what I end up doing is layering those and then pulling back the blend just a touch. So I might blend in 50% topaz denoise with the original image. So the original grain comes through just a little bit. So it doesn't look too unnatural, but there's a problem with this. Topaz's AI model is trained on terrestrial images. It knows nothing about astrophotography. It's suspicious in that it may especially with the sharpening, it may introduce artifacts or details that aren't really there. And that is always something we want to avoid in astrophotography in general. So we do have to be careful with using AI tools. So when tools come along like BlurX, which are trained on astrophotography data, trained on real data, that's something I would prefer to use over the more general solutions like Topaz AI. And I have an exciting new plugin for PixInsight that I used on this M83 image and it kind of blew me away. I'm going to be talking about Deep SNR. This is a plugin from the same guy who coded Starnet, which we use a lot for star removal. But I want to show you something I discovered that applies to Starnet and BlurX and this new tool, Deep SNR. And I'm going to show you how I can get the best possible denoise result out of my images. Now, let me show you how it works. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. You might have noticed that not every video has a sponsor. I only put a sponsor on videos which I think are really useful because I know that they'll get more views. That makes the sponsor happy too. So I've got no hesitations because this is going to be a really useful video for you guys to make sure that I shout out High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are a New Jersey astronomy vendor. They sell telescopes, cameras, everything you need for your astrophotography journey. They fully support their product and they have a price match guarantee. And I believe they just opened up international shipping. They've been supporting this channel for a long time and I really enjoy that because they get great feedback from my viewers and from their customers. So check out www.highpointscientific, all the links below in the description. If you wanna replicate my setup, all the links to all my gears down there. Okay, let's use Deep SNR now. Okay, so funny story, I actually reached out to Topaz, fed back to them and I said, can you train your tool a little bit more on astrophotography because it doesn't seem to deal with stellar stuff very well. And they said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I haven't heard a word from them since. Uh, so this tool actually is something I've been waiting for for a long time. I really love what the author has done here. Now, this is the website, deepsnrastro.com, and the author is Makita Misiura, which sounds like a full-on rock star name, like a guy who invented a cryptocurrency and then released a white paper and then disappeared. Uh, but he has a fantastic gallery. If you haven't uh, checked it out, uh, he is severely underrated, 247 followers. Amazing. Anyway, I shouldn't have to tell you how to install software and I'm not going to go through the process in detail but essentially just go to the download page on that website download the um, version for Mac or Windows as you need and you'll have these files in a zip file in your downloads folder just drag and drop them into the bin folder in your PixInsight this C program files PixInsight bin just drag and drop them in then when you open PixInsight, you just have to install that component. We go to Processes, Modules, Install Modules, Search, it finds it. There's the deep SNR and we just say Install. And then you should be ready to go, pretty easy. Now let's open up a test image. Okay, so 
Here is the final image before I apply any of the denoise and sharpening at the end of what I do. So this has been taken with three filters, R, G, oh sorry, H, A, G and B for the galaxy combination. And because I've drizzled the image and I'm taking it such a huge resolution, the pixels on the QHY268M are quite small, I end up with an image usually at 4096 pixels, which is quite large. Uh, so I typically downscale from here and then get good sampling with my setup. But let's look at this noise profile. I'll zoom in even more because I want this to come through on the recording. I'll zoom right into these little peripheral galaxies on the edge here. Okay, so we have some noise. It's not too overwhelming, but it's something I'd like to reduce in the final image. Now, if I run this deep SNR process, let's have a look. There's not much to the tool, right? It's got one slider for strength and a tick for linear data. Now this is linear data because I have already run the stretch and applied the stretch with histogram transformation in PixInsight. Oh, and I should mention also, this plugin is free. I didn't have to pay for this, but PixInsight is not free, so you do have to bring your own PixInsight. All right, so I've got my non-linear data. We're told by the author and by people who've used it that it doesn't work well with debayed images. It only works well if you're using, if you're using astrophotography, which has been shot on a monochrome camera and then channel combined later, because the type of noise that one shot color debayering introduces is not the type of noise it's trained on to remove. But let's see how this goes. This is gonna take a while. I'm gonna drag and drop from the triangle onto the image and it goes through its process. And let's let the magic of editing speed this up a bit because it takes a while. There you go. So you'll see, I'm not really happy with this result. It still has a lot of speckle all through the image um, and it's an odd kind of speckle. I'm just gonna clone this out uh, as a cop and see where we're at. And you can see all that speckle there. It's not great. If this was what Deep SNR does, I wouldn't be recommending it. Um, but let's leave this here so we can compare because I've found, okay, so there's the before and after. You can see there's a lot of red color noise in here and here it's reduced a lot of that, but it still has this uh, red dot speckle all the way through it. But here's the thing. I have found that these AI tools work wildly differently at different scales. And the author of this tool has said that you should be doing this early on in your workflow. It doesn't apply to me at least because images are huge. In fact, this image was drizzled and it was much bigger than this even. And I've pulled it down to 4096. But I find if I pull the image down further to get it to web size or screen size the way I want it, not print size, but screen size, then run the tool again, completely different results. I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm going to resample this image. I'm going to resample it by half to 2048. Now I'm going to run deep SNR again and let's see how it's different. That was a lot faster, a lot faster than Topaz AI. But you see now I have this result which is buttery smooth like Topaz, but pretty clean. Like it's preserved all the stars and the shapes really well. That is to me, perfect noise reduction. I might even back it off a touch, but otherwise that's great. And I find that trick with going down to a manageable size or a display size actually works really well for other AI tools as well, like BlurX. Uh, I'll just run this on defaults here and see how it goes. See, BlurX has this reputation for looking overcooked, but when I come down to this size, it's still a little bit crunchy, but it's not as overcooked as it looks at other sizes. So I can do less blending. I could get away with posting this image as a complete image right now. I did back it off a little bit in my final. So I back it off with blending in Photoshop layers, just so I can have more granular control over the output. But I am really happy with this image and I'm really happy that these tools are available for us to just take that last little step, the final step in the processing process, the processing process. So deep SNR, I highly recommend it, but just tell me what your results are with this size trick. If you have an image which is 10,000 pixels wide or 4,000, 5,000 pixels wide, I find that these tools aren't doing a very good job but at screen resolutions, they are absolutely fantastic. So it might be harder to use these tools for print if you're doing high, high resolution stuff that's intended for magazines or posters or billboards or whatever. 
Uh, but certainly for screen sizes, these tools are excellent. I find that Deep SNR gives me a result that I like better than Topaz. And so from now on, I will be switching to Deep SNR as my default denoise tool. It's a pretty shocking before and after really, isn't it? Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope this little tidbit helps your processing workflow. If you don't use PixInsight, you can't use Deep SNR yet. However, the author has been known to release standalone versions. Uh, also, this isn't being GPU accelerated just yet, but Starnet does have GPU acceleration support. So there's every possibility in future that this denoise tool might also get graphics card acceleration, which is fantastic. Thank you for all your great work, Nikita. I highly recommend everyone jumps over and follows him on Instagram and also tries out this plugin. I highly recommend it. That's it, my name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.